Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are so. It's our final Saturday night in Philadelphia, and things indeed are cooking here at Citizens Bank Ballpark, where the Braves and Phils meet in Game 2 of our three-game series. All year long, Braves baseball is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, the right stuff at low price every day. Neither the Braves nor the Phillies are heading to postseason play, but second place is on the line for Atlanta. There's a three-way tie for second in the East. Let's see if Atlanta can pick up a victory tonight in game two. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe, welcome back to the ballpark. Atlanta let a lead slip away last night. They led 4 nothing. Phillies ended up winning the ball game by a final of 5-4, to four, but that doesn't overshadow a remarkable accomplishment by Justin Upton. The Braves left fielder hit a major milestone for the first time. Yeah, we owe him a real tip of the cap tonight to honor what he's done by breaking the 100 RBI milestone. Took him a little while to get there in September because it was a tough month for him after a great month of August. But all season long, he's been the guy in the middle of the lineup, batting cleanup behind Freddie Freeman, getting those kind of hugs about 28 times this year, as a matter of fact, after circling the bases. But for Justin, a very good year this year, right at 270, 341 on base. There's the homers and RBIs, first outfielder since Jeff Brancourt in 07 with 100 RBIs. And that's our Home Depot tools from the dugout. And hopefully he'll be able to pad those RBI and perhaps those home run totals as well for he'll be opposed by A.J. Burnett. He leads Major League Baseball in losses. Aaron Harang gets the ball for the Braves. And Joe, he's pitched terrifically all year. Yeah, it's great to see Aaron out there tonight. He's got a chance to finish at 500. Hopefully he win the ball game tonight and go out on a good note. Sounds like a good plan. It's the Braves. It's the Phillies. It's game two. And the lineups and Jen Hildreth are coming up next. of the season. Hey guys, Jen Hildreth here with you. 
One guy you're not going to see for the Braves tomorrow is scheduled starter Alex Wood. Freddie Gonzalez told us before the game that Alex was experiencing some left forearm tenderness after his last start on Tuesday. So he was evaluated by doctors in Atlanta before they came here to Philly. And Freddie said Alex is going to have to do some pretty good convincing of both he and pitching coach Roger McDowell to get out there. Because let's face it, at this point in the season, he said, we're not taking any chances with Alex. So the next question then becomes, who will be pitching for the Braves? And the answer is... Nobody has any idea at this point. I talked to Roger McDowell just a few moments ago, and he said, look, we're just going to try to win this game tonight. It will be somebody out of the bullpen. So keep your eye on who comes in, who doesn't, who has maybe not pitched much lately. That could be who you see starting on the mound for the Braves tomorrow, guys. Wow, what a wild way to end the season, Jen. And from what I understand, the situation for Alex Wood is not considered serious, but why chance it, as Jen said, and the other factor is tonight's starter Aaron Harangjo might not be 100% either. Yeah, he's been a little bit under the weather, but he declared himself all right, ready to go, and I expect nothing but uh, typical Aaron Harang. That may work in his favor tonight, where his sinker's working and keeping the ball down. So the Phillies take the field behind A.J. Burnett. Here's the Braves lineup. Atlanta trying to win its 78th game this year. Told you all about Justin Upton hitting the 100 RBI mark. That's good for third in National League play this year. He's the cleanup man. He hits behind Freddie Freeman and ahead of Jason Hayward. Bethancourt Johnson, B.J. Upton eighth, and Aaron Harang ninth. And A.J. Burnett is the man on the mound for the Phillies. He's had a tough 2014 year. This is his 15th year in the big leagues. 37 years old, 6'4", 225 out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Things were going along okay in the first half. Good ERA and opponent's average, and then the bottom dropped out. Not only did his run support dry up, but the runs he allowed started to double as well, going 2-9 and nine over his last 13 second-half starts. A.J. Burnett, originally an eighth-round pick by the Mets back in 1995. His four keys to pitching success tonight. Well, one word sums it up pretty well, I think. He's wild. Leads the world in walks with 93. In fact, the closest guy to him in the National League is Zach Wheeler, and he's 14 walks behind. He's also hit 16 batters, if that tells you anything. And 9 of 11. Against the Braves, he's had a tough time of, of it. He's 0-4 in his last five games against the Braves, and he's lost nine of his last 11 against Atlanta. Here's how the Phillies' defense looks behind A.J. Burnett tonight. Let's start in the outfield. Bird, Revere, and Brown from right to left. Howard Utley, Blanco, and Ashy on the left side. Will Nieves gets the start behind the plate. Beautiful night in Philadelphia. Gorgeous weather this time of year. Hardly any breeze at all. Very comfortable. And another pretty good crowd tonight for game two of the series. We are underway. C.B. Buckner has the plate tonight. And he calls strike one. Better tonight than tomorrow. Bonifacio, a 262 hitter, a couple of homers. And 23 knocked in. Sharply hit toward Utley, sliding stop, and a fine play for out number one. Wow. Where's that been? That's pretty quick reactions by the veteran. This was hit hard, and Emilio's been scuffling to get hits. Could have used that one. Nice play. So Utley retires Bonifacio, and here's Angleton Simmons, the brave shortstop with seven homers. He's knocked in 46 and is hitting 246. Hello. There's that wildness you were talking about a moment ago. It's no secret A.J. Burnett was contemplating retirement after last season with the Pirates. He is also contemplating retirement after this year. He does have a vesting contract option, which apparently has vested. But it's up to Burnett whether he wants to continue to pitch next year for the Phillies. Well, he's made every start. He's over 200 innings pitched. Whatever the uh, incentives were to kick that option year in, I'm sure he has passed it. 
Little tapper is foul of the plate. Simmons will head back with a one two count. You might recall he had a fine start against the Braves in April. He got off to a slow start for the Phillies. His fourth start of the year came against Atlanta, a game that the Phillies won one to nothing. He didn't get a decision in that game. But you might remember he's been suffering from a hernia. That forced him to alter his mechanics on the mound. And that might influence his decision at the end of this season. In the meantime, Anderton Simmons very slowly back to the batter's box. He was limping when he went across the bag. Still favoring that left ankle. It's still really barking. Just missed. This was the last swing. Foul, he pulled up halfway and it took him a long time to get back to home plate. Down the line and into the seats. We'll do it again. Two balls and two strikes. Last night was a rarity. Nine runs, 20 hits between the two teams, and only one home run. Between the two, and that was by Chris Johnson. This ballpark gives him up. Another foul tip by Ambleton. Two balls, two strikes. Burnett still has a ton of strikeouts, 183 of them in 207 innings pitched. And he's 43rd all time in strikeouts. He just passed Charlie Huff. Next on the list, if he continues to pitch next year, is Sandy Koufax. Really? Mm -hmm. 2,363 career strikeouts. Anderson's making him work here in the first. This is empty, one out. I got a piece of that. Fastball tops out at around 94 now. Curve ball and a change up. In the other right. Bird back, still going back onto the warning track near that wall, and he makes the catch. <laughs> Terrific at bat for Anderton Simmons, but he's the second out. <laughs> See what kind of attention Anderton gets in the dugout. If any. Rocket Wheeler up from the minor leagues to help the Braves over these final couple of weeks. With a pat on the back for a good battle with Burnett. And Freddie Gonzalez quickly down there to talk to him. You know, at the risk, at the risk of injuring it that to a point that it might require some surgery or Something like that. I'm, I'm not sure the purpose of why he is in there. Well, I, I do know because he wants to play. Right. And so Freddie plays him, but it's so apparent that he can't play at full strength. So he, Freddie gave him a chance, and we'll see in the bottom half of the inning if he goes out. Two and one for Freddie. Shift on for the Phillies. Swung over the top and has an even count.
Freddie had two hits in an RBI last night. Double and a single in his last two at bats. And now the counts four. Broken bat roller out toward Utley who comes in from the outfield grass and gets Freddie Freeman for a three up three down top of the first inning. Aaron Harang goes to work. Ben Revere leads things off for the Phillies. Still scoreless. In, in last place in the division. They've clinched that with a 73 and 87 mark, but they've got Ben Revere at the top of the order. He is the hits leader in the National League. Then Ashy, then Utley, then Ryan Howard, who's hit the Braves hard once again in 2014. Bird Brown, Nieves, Blanco, and Burnett, the bottom part of the order, and Aaron Harang goes to the post for the Braves. His 33rd start of the year, his career numbers at Citizens Bank Park, outstanding. Four and one with a 4.11 ERA. That ERA not high for this ballpark. Good numbers here. Revere is a prototypical singles hitter. Ford keys to success for Aaron Harang. Get to 500. That would be a good milestone to end the season. And the 33 and 200. The Braves signed him when he. Was let go by Cleveland. They needed help in the rotation. He's provided 33 starts and 200 plus innings if he just throws three or more tonight. Slicing toward the stands and reach. Two balls, two strikes for Revere, 182 hits, 160 of those hits are singles. Center curling away from Upton, but he gets there. Nice 
base running catch retires Revere for the first out. Cody Ashey is hitting second tonight. He batted seventh yesterday. Ooh. Almost snow coned out of there. Had to go a long way to get it though. Ashey two hits two runs and an RBI last night. Second run tied the game in the sixth for the Phillies. This ball is pulled foul at first base, 0 2. Braves have handled him pretty handily this summer. He's 6 for 40 against Braves pitching. That's a 150 batting average. And Cody's knocked in three of his 46 RBIs against the Braves. And Harang fooled him badly with that ball in the dirt. And a low throw to first retires him for the second out. Here's Utley. Sorry, Chip. There's several guys in this lineup that have had good success against Aaron Harang, and Chase Utley's one of them with a 406 career average against him. Howard, Bird, Brown all have good numbers against him, and primarily because these guys. Want the ball in and they hang over the plate. And Aaron's not a guy that pitches inside a lot. He's trying to run the ball away from you, but they know they can kind of hang over the plate to try to get something to, to pull. Eleven homers for Utley, 78 RBIs. Pitched great ball over his last three outings. A 129 ERA, but a one and two record in that stretch. Yeah, with hardly any runs to work with. He got beat his last start by the Pirates, you might remember, one to nothing on a McCutcheon home run. He went seven innings, only gave up four hits. But again, zero runs of support. Swing and a miss. Two strikeouts for Aaron Harang. We are an inning in in Philadelphia. Scoreless game. Here's your Delta Airlines on deck trio coming up to Braves.
at tonight's Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot feature. There are several Braves who've had good luck against A.J. Burnett, and here they are. Simmons just uh, made it out his first time up four for 12, but Upton's coming up with good numbers. Hayward likewise. Chris Johnson six for 14 with a home run. Ian Hayward in the lineup tonight uh, have done a lot of damage against this veteran right hander. Justin Upton gets it started for the Braves. How cool must it have been for Justin to wake up this morning, check out the newspaper, look at the RBI leaders, and see 100 next to his name? First time that's happened for him in the big leagues. And that total good for third in the National League. So also third with 28 homers. Adrian Gonzalez of the Dodgers leads the league and runs batted in. Giancarlo Stanton, who's been out for three weeks or so, still second now with 105. Yeah, real shame for Stanton. He would have led the league in homers and RBIs, and I think would have had a better shot at winning the MVP. Down the right field line. That's a fair ball and headed for the corner. Marlon Bird will dig it out. Upton on his way to second. Bird's just now picking up the baseball. And Upton will stop at second with a leadoff double. Yeah, teams don't play Justin Upton to hit the other way. Bird had a long way to go to the right field corner to get that one. Two seamer, maybe even a change up that he was trying to back up to the outside corner. RBI chance for Jason Hayward. He's knocked in 58 men. Strike one. And had a double and a run scored last night. Back where it came from. Oh, great stop it short and no play. What an unbelievable snag at shortstop. Blanco took away a clean hit to center and saved a run as a result. And the Braves have runners at first and third now. He was playing up the middle to begin with, but tremendous reactions again by one of the Phillies middle infielders to save a run. I don't think he expected to have a play at first, so he looked at third. But he might have had a play on Hayward if he'd have come up throwing to first. The ball was smacked. So first and third for Bethancourt. And RBIs for the young Atlanta catcher and a big swing and a miss. Christian can go into his two strike approach that he's done so well. Double play ball. There's one. Little shuffle of the feet by Chase Utley. But that'll score Justin Upton and give the Braves a 1 0 lead. 
on the double play ball that goes six to four to three. I think Utley did what Russell Martin did the other night, and that is when he when his foot hit on top of the base, it just slid off. So he was fortunate to keep his feet be able to make the throw. But the Braves have struck first, and Chris Johnson bats. This is a long homer here last night. It's long by this ballpark standards. It was 387 feet. So Chris carries a three game hitting streak tonight. One of the group of Braves hitters that's had good luck against Mr. Burnett. Double infield hit and double play has played at the game's first run. Full count. And that threw a no hitter once. Well, with the Marlins at San Diego, I think he walked nine that night. He didn't want Chris Johnson, who thought that was ball four. Instead, he's rung up. First strikeout for A.J. Burnett. And I think Chris might be fine for the bat flip, the glove flip, and the helmet flip. Atlanta scores first in the second. There's your lead, Aaron Harang. He'll face Ryan Howard when we come back. Nothing we head to the bottom of the second inning. Let's take a look at that strike three pitch to third baseman Chris Johnson. And remember, it's not where the catcher catches the ball or how bad he makes it look when he catches it in the Avis's case, but where the ball crossed the plate, it wasn't that bad a pitch. Good change up, and the, the helmet will make him a little lighter in the wallet right here. It's fine. And then he saw that he was being written up for that, so he threw his batting gloves and See if he could see that and watch CB's reaction. What? What are you going to do next? You can pay the National League 500 bucks. Yeah, push. probably so. <laughs> so, Aaron Harang has a lead. He's got Ryan Howard in the batter's box. Say what you will about the year for Ryan Howard and how it's not been up to his lofty offensive standards. 
fact of the matter is this man still driven in 93 runs this year. That's the fourth highest total in the National League. Ryan is pretty much at this point an all or nothing offensive player. He struck out 188 times. Despite walking 66 times, you saw that very low on base percentage for the Philly slugger. High fly ball hammered deep right center field. Hayward's going to admire that one. A take measure homer for Howard. That was an all result. Yeah, it was. Number 23, big high hanging hook, like he was sitting back waiting on it, not fooled at all. Number 23 in RBI, 94. So we're tied at one for Marlon Bird. He's their team leader in homers with 25. Only the 15th allowed by Aaron. It's not like Aaron provided a whole lot of the power for Howard. He said the big slow curveball, and he just launched it with a 398 sign and six seven rows up. Had a nice season for the Phillies. And he stays alive here. Two balls, two strikes. Only 144 strikeouts last year combined between Pittsburgh and New York. And this year, 182. So a lot more whips for Marlin this year. But he took ball four here and is aboard in front of Dominic Brown. Brown singled and scored in four trips last night. He's got 10 hits in his last 28 at bats. Smoke towards center. BJ gives ground and makes the play. Bird back to first with one out. Here's Nevis. Strike one. Final start of the year for Aaron Harang. He's trying for his 12th win. It's 11 and 12 so far this year.
Marlins lost tonight to Washington. That was a 5 1 final. The Mets and Houston are scoreless in the second. Three way tie for second place in the East at the start of play tonight. There's Marlins and Mets 17 games behind the Nationals. Have clinched home field advantage throughout the National League portion of their playoffs. Pittsburgh trying to catch the Cardinals lost today. They let a lead get away late and lost an extra innings to the Reds 10 to 6. Santiago hit a grand slam to win it. So if the Cardinals can win tonight in Arizona, St. Louis would clinch the Central and the Pirates would take on the Giants in the wild card game. Giants beat San Diego 3 1. One ball, two strikes. And Havis didn't get it. So if the Pirates lose tomorrow and the Giants win again, they will be tied. And then I think the home field would switch to the Giants based on. Head to head competition, they own the tiebreaker. I think the Pirates had a better record than the, over the Giants. I had them at four and two against. Oh, I thought it was the other way around. Yes, yeah, I think the Giants would host it. Now, if it's a division tying situation, there would be a one game playoff. Right. It's a wild card that reverts back to head to head. Correct. And the Pirates own a four two advantage. Correct. Okay. So Pittsburgh would host the one game shootout with the Giants. So they've clinched home field no matter what. Correct. Wild card wise. Correct. They're hoping the Cardinals lose tonight and lose again tomorrow, and they can somehow beat the Reds and force a Monday game head to head with St. Louis. And that game would be in St. Louis, where the Pirates have gone 8 and 11 against the Cardinals. So the Giants, if that happened, Giants would just get on a plane and start heading east, and they could stop in either St. Louis or keep going on to Pittsburgh. I'd stop in Kansas City, get some. Arthur Bryant's barbecue. Mm -hmm. Wipe your hands and then figure out okay, Pittsburgh or St. Louis. And a swing and a miss. Takes care of Andres Blanco and Aaron Harang is out of the second inning. He allows the Ryan Howard homer, the 47th homer Howard's hit against the Braves more than any other team. Aaron Santana will join us when we come back. Citizens Bank Ballpark, Joe Simpson, Chip Carey, Jen Hilbert with you as well tonight. Let's take a look inside our dugout. And there's the smiling face of Braves right hander, Urban Santan. Best smile in baseball, wouldn't you say? Gotta be. Gotta be. 
Well, congratulations on an outstanding year with the Braves, Irvin. I, I'm you. sure this was a, a unique circumstance that you found yourself in. You didn't know where you were going to end up late in spring training, and all of a sudden, here you are in Atlanta. I think all of our fans would like to know what you thought of your experience with the Braves this year. It was nice. It was nice. I like it, you know, and uh, it was different because it's my first year in uh, National League, so I like it. And you liked hitting. I like hitting too. Yeah, I <laughs> went out on a good note with that double last night. <laughs> Good swing. Thank you. This is BJ Upton leading things off for the Braves. And he takes outside. I'm sure you know all about the history of the Braves, their history of great pitchers. What does it feel like to wear a Braves uniform knowing of that history? It feels great. Feels great, you know. Um. <laughs> Who's, who is that, by the way? Gerald. Oh. <laughs> it feels great, especially with the, all the history there. It's in the, it's being in the in this team and uh, I like it. They're nice. A little bit of disappointment in the month of September. I know for you guys. How have you guys been able to keep your focus, stay professional, keep playing hard? Yeah, it's tough. You know, it's tough because uh, we don't we don't want the season to end like this right now. You know, man. Uh, we do we we playing hard the whole year and then uh, disappointing uh, September. So it's. You know, it's very tough. What will you do this winter? Uh, stay in shape, practice hard, and then run, run more. You know, no. trying to get some job for the next year. No pitching at all in the winter leagues. No, no pitching. Okay. How about Jose sitting next to you? Jose going to play any winter ball? Yeah, he is. He's going to. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he said he's okay. going to. Where is he going to play? Um, he's played for the Toros uh, in, in La Romana, so. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Good. Hang out with Sammy Sosa in baseball season. Down there, <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Sammy Sosa's town. <laughs> nice. It's very nice. One one game three balls two strikes the count to BJ Upton Irvin just a few short years ago you were a young pitcher in the major leagues. You've been around you've pitched a long time now. This balls hit hard toward right and birds going back and that ball's going to sail out of here. Yep. B.J. Upton with an opposite field home run. Put her in the board. Yes. <laughs> 12 homer for B.J. Upton. And Atlanta's back in front by a 2-1 count. It's a lot more fun watching your teammates do this, Irvin, than when somebody does it to you. Huh? I know. I know. It's very, very exciting. B.J. trying to have a good finish to his second season with the Braves. He's been going the other way quite a bit with some authority. No, a home run the other way. The Braves are back in front. Here's Aaron Harang. But I was going to ask you, but this is a very young team, as you know. The Braves are a very young group collectively, and there are three really young starters in rotation with you, in Mike Miner, Alex Wood, and more specifically Julio Tehran. What have you seen from them? What have you seen as far as their baseball growth has uh, happened this year? A lot of maturity, you know. They're very mature. They go about their business. They play hard. I mean, and uh, they love to win. You know, they're a lot. They're competitive. Do they come to you and ask you questions a lot? Sometimes, sometimes. Um, like they when I'm not pitching, and like Julio's not pitching, and we see and talk about this team and all that. So it's it's, it's very 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 important for us to. To say something about that. Well, I know Mike Miner came to you for a little help, or was it something that you noticed about his grip on his breaking ball that you helped him with? No, he just came up to me and, and asked me about it, and uh, he just asked me where, how, how do I throw the slider? How do I throw the two seam? And then uh, just showing the grip, and then he practiced in the bullpen, and then. Uh, I see the good results. It really seemed to help him a lot. I know he appreciated it. So who knows? In ten years, you can become a pitching coach. Maybe. 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 <laughs> Maybe. That would be great. That would be great. Yeah. I like Jose. Jose's nodding. He doesn't have any idea what we're talking about. I right? know. He just. He just very very exciting to be on TV right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him I thought it was the Jose Constanza bobblehead. 
Oye, que, que él dice que tú piensas que eres de José Contanza Bobojé porque está haciendo siempre que sí. <laughs> oh, man. Bonifacio, the batter. No balls, two strikes. And he is down swinging. That's the second out. We're going to put a graphic up on the screen, Irvin, that talks about and shows your accomplishments this year. In the history of the Braves franchise, Only four pitchers have struck out 150 more men and won 14 or more games in their first season here in Atlanta. I don't know if you knew that or not, but you really did have a great historical season this year. I didn't know. No, that, that's pretty good company that you're you're in too, because I think Maddox was in that group. Tim Hudson was in that group. Oh, that's a very unique group. Yep. I like it. Very nice. Thank you for telling me that. Mm -hmm. So you can tell your agent too. <laughs> the off season, and we hope uh, hope you come back and, and pitch for the Braves. I know that's a decision. I would love to. You know, I, I like this team and, and uh, everything. I like everything about this team. Well, we've enjoyed having you too. And I, I wanted to ask you about uh, your friends in Kansas City. First time in forever, they're going to the playoffs. That has I to know, be. That's, that's be very nice exciting to see too. That's very exciting for them. I'm very happy for them because they play. They they, they play. Um, Very hard this year, you know, and then they, they deserve it. Irvin, it's a pleasure. Congratulations on a fun year. Dodge some more sunflower seeds, and we'll see you after the game. Thank you. All right. <laughs> the smiling face of Irvin Santana and his bobblehead buddy, Jose Constanza. On the Navy, here we go. <laughs>
51 hits. And he has eight doubles, three triples, and three homers. Hmm. He's got some extra base hits in there. Count. Your high in wins was 18 with Toronto in 08. Sharply hit to short and handcuffed Simmons, but he hung with it and he made the play to retire Burnett for out number one. Well, if you lead your league in losses, well, that's certainly not a good thing to have a major league pitcher experience. But it also tells you that you're good enough to go out there every fifth day. And he's done that for the Phillies again in a season that has seen him be less than 100% physically. He's got the stuff to win 15 to 20 every year, even at, at age 37. And he has seasons like this and he's had some before where every time out he could throw a two hit shot out and every time out he could not get out of the third inning. Hard to figure. Slashed foul and out of play by Ben Revere a ball into strike. As I said for Burnett. His option has been. Earned if he chooses to accept it and continue playing talking to some of the Phillies before the series. As thin as they are in their rotation, there's a school of thought. They hope he accepts it simply because of the fact we can give you 200 innings. Yeah, well, where I, else are the Phillies going to get that? Well, I see it a different way. I see it that they're in last place. They've got all of these contracts that have saddled them and kept them from developing some of their younger players. Why would you want him to maybe stymie the development of another guy who could get 140 or 50 innings? No question. And, and make them better two years from now. I, I, and I, I don't know their system like me neither. These guys do. Uh, maybe they don't have that guy on hand. If that's the case, that's even more frightening for Ryan Sandberg and the Phillies. Well, I have a feeling that if they had this backlog of pitchers, like say the Mets do, we'd already know about it. Right. I know that they've got one guy that everybody's high on that's in, like he may be the top pitching prospect in all of baseball. And, and I'll find his name for you, but it. It's like a Giardino, Gambetti, something like that. Um, that, of course, would be a huge fan favorite in Philadelphia. Yes. Um, so I know they've got at least one guy, but I don't know how far away he is. Two note Ashy. Well, they've been very happy with David Buchanan, the Georgia State product. Mm -hmm. He's pitched pretty well down the stretch for them, so he's almost a lock to make rotation with Hamels and Cliff Lee if he's healthy. Miguel Gonzalez, I believe, is another man they signed to a long term contract. And we saw him pitching relief earlier this year. He may get a crack at starting for the Phillies next year. And then the decision on Burnett or someone else. Bouncing ball up the middle. Tricky play and a good one made by Bonifacio that retires Ashy and the Phillies in order six up six down for Harang who sends the game to the fourth with a one run lead.
Game two of our series. Freeman, Justin Upton, and Jason Hayward are coming up for the Braves. And speaking of Freddie Freeman, let's check out our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. Freeman with 43 doubles this year. That is the second highest total in a single season in Atlanta franchise history. Needs two to catch former second baseman Marcus Giles. We had 45 of them back in 2005. Took a shot the other way and sliced it foul for a strike. Freeman grounded out to second back in the Braves first. It's been a season of offensive ebbs and flows for Freeman this year. Some very, very hot streaks, most notably the first five, six weeks of the season. He's had a couple of runs where he's been ice cold. But since August 2nd, Freeman's been hitting well over 300, 311 to be exact. That's the good news. The bad news is just 18 RBIs in the last two months. And a ground ball up the middle. Shift is on, and that'll skip off the glove of the shortstop, Blanco. And Freeman's around first with a leadoff single. Perfectly placed by Freeman. And a good start in the fourth. Right off the foot. That shift didn't work. One hundred seventy four hits for Freddie this year. He's one behind Casey McGee of the Marlins. It's time for fifth in the league. Freddie had 176 hits last year. One ball, no strikes. And a little low for Upton. I asked, uh, went down the hall and asked some Phillies people if uh, if there were any of their young pitchers who were close that might make the club next year. And they, there was only one. And that was. Uh, the top pick, I'm not sure it was this year or last year, Aaron Nola out of LSU. And he pitched primarily at double A this year and did a good job. And they think he'll come to camp next year with a with a chance to make the team. So it's not like as we suspected, it's not like they've got a cubby of guys that are ready to move in. Upton broke his bat, and that's rolled foul. Why well, the Phillies have similar challenges as the Braves do? And that is, they have a couple of well, several more contracts, but still some contracts they've got to find a way to move because they have log jams. They are a old, expensive, and at least in the case of Chase Utley, still a very productive team in many ways. We said Howard, 94 RBIs now for the Phillies. They got to get younger. Braves are already fourth youngest team in the league. After being the youngest team most of this season in the National League, that's changed with some of the call ups this September. And we talked about this last night. That was the success of the Braves during their great run. Every year you had a rookie or two coming up and, if not starting, playing significant roles either on the pitching staff or in the bullpen. So the Phillies talent was traded away to acquire veteran players. So we get a miss by Upton. And he is retired on strikes. Four of those for A.J. Burnett tonight. One on one out. Jason Hayward had some fun before the game as he was loosening up and being harassed per usual by the Philly fanatic who likes to mess with the visiting teams when they're loosening up. Jason just hopped on his four wheel ATV and stole it. Drove it right over in front of the Braves dugout and left it, parked it. No balls and a strike. 
for Jason Hayward. Freeman at first. And a swing and a miss. Here the pregame hijinks. After he parked it. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> the fanatic was perplexed. Stopped by Nieves. Okay, you played in the era when the chicken was the best mascot in baseball, right? San Diego chicken mm -hmm. in their heydays. San Diego chicken for the fanatic. Clayton Kershaw. <laughs> uh. That is an absolute genuine toss up. One two pitch is inside two and two. Always loved it when the chicken would grab the little kids out of the stands and dress them in the little chicken outfits and they'd follow them around the field. When they both made you laugh out loud hysterically, then it's a tie game. But it's hard, you know, if you're not in the game starting and those mascots are doing their thing, I, I would assume it's hard to not not look. Oh, even when you're playing, trust me. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Full count pitch. Freeman. And about a three step lead. Mm -hmm. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Never could get uncoiled. He was <laughs> he was ready to go and got the great jump and then decided it was too great a jump. There he goes, swing and a miss. And the Avis throw is on the money. Beautiful throw. Beautiful throw. Strike him out, throw him out, double play. Ends the Atlanta fourth, 2 1 game. Up in their half with Utley, Howard, and Marlon Bird. Pretty view from our perch here at Citizens Bank Park. One more game, and then we'll get things figured out for 2015. And you can get things figured out. Join us for the Braves 2015 Braves Fantasy Camp at Disney's Wide World of Sports. Play ball with some of your favorite Braves alumni. It's an experience you don't want to miss for the ultimate Braves fans. And it's less than 10 spots remain. Visit Braves.com slash fantasy camp.
First three Phillies hitters are 0 for 5 tonight. Utley struck out to end the first. And when Aaron's rolling, it's just like he's playing catch in the backyard with his son. In this case, Christian Bethencourt probably young enough to be his son. Up the middle. And Simmons dives, and it's off the tip of his glove. At least thinking about two. Upton got to it. Throw to second is going to be in not in time. Don't tell Chase Utley the Phillies are 73 and 87. He plays hard with every pitch, and he has a fourth inning double. Well, he made that good play in the first inning that Rob Bonifacio kind of told you how his legs were feeling. And now, when this one gets away off the end of the glove from Simmons, he never hesitated. And again, boy, he hits the bag hard and slid right over the top of it with his front foot. Again, lucky he didn't get hurt. Another RBI chance for Ryan Howard. Four of Howard's 23 homers have come against the Braves this year. Mike Howard's hit a home run against Atlanta every 14 at bats. He has 19 homers against the rest of the big leagues in 507 at bats. It's that ball the other way. Here comes Utley around third. They're going to wave it. Upton comes up throwing. His peg to the plate is going to be in time. Perfect throw from Upton. And Utley out on a hard tag at the plate. And the Braves maintain their lead. Let's see if Bethancourt's all right. Ryan Sandberg's coming out of the dugout, too. I don't know if to question the call or where Bethancourt was set up. Oh no, he gave him plenty of room to get in there. There's the alley. Couldn't tell where his feet were on that one. Here we go. He definitely has a lane. Oh, great job of blocking him. I mean, that, that's partially Chase Utley's fault because he kind of tucked his leg on a bent leg slide and went right into the shin guards of Bethancourt. He had an opening. If he goes with his front foot around the shin guard, he might have gotten in there. Nice throw by Justin. So Ryan Sandberg is going to challenge this call, it appears. That low angle replay we just showed you, I think, was clear and convincing that Utley was out and out easily. So they're going to check and see if he had the plate blocked, and the answer is no. That was a perfect play. And Utley is out of the plate. Call stands. And I guarantee you, Chase Utley's feeling it after crashing into those shin guards. Watch how his legs tucked under him. He can't get the front leg extended because he slid right into the shin guard. No way for him to get to the plate. First thing that crossed the plate was his right knee. So that's the blocking the plate rule that has caused so much frustration and confusion in Major League Baseball. It took about 10 seconds for New York to confirm the call on the field. And with playoffs approaching, hopefully there'll be some common sense application of that rule. With all the attention that will be focused on those critical plays at the plate. That was an easy call, I think. Yeah. Not a good slide. So here's Bird, runner at first after the Howard hit. Marlin skies one back. Or strike two. Popped him up. Right in the middle of a diamond. Who wants it? Freddie Freeman does. 
two outs. And Marlon Brown bats. He lined out to center. It's Justin Upton's fifth assist from the outfield this year. Two at second, one at third, and two at home plate now. Jason Hayward leads the team with nine. There's David Hale. I want to wish him a happy birthday today. 27 years young. Happy birthday, David. I asked him yesterday about his start that last game at home when he pitched into the fifth inning, gave up only two runs and got took the loss, but he said, you know, if I'd just gone five, it would have been perfect. I just couldn't get out of the fifth inning, but I felt good about being able to use all my pitches and since it had been a long time since he had done that. He said that the good thing about starting is that if you have an issue going on a little mechanical thing going on. You can work on it between starts and try to get it ironed out. If you've got a pitch that you know needs a little tweaking. He said but when you're in the bullpen you can't do that because you've got to save yourself for the game that night. It's hard to hard to work on stuff but he said I'm. Whatever the future holds next year, whatever they want me to do, I'll be ready to do it. Wonder if he's kind of in the Alex Wood mold in that he's a starting pitcher. I think the evidence would lead you to believe that to be the case, wouldn't you? I, I do. I, I think he's. I'd rather see him start than relieve, but he served a role this year in long, long relief that the Braves needed. And the thing about. Some of the situations he was brought into later in the season where the Braves needed a ground ball. Okay, well, that limits you to what pitches you use. You're trying to get a sinker, you're trying to get a ground ball, and sometimes that sinker is best set up by some of your other pitches. Line towards short by Brown, and that'll end the inning. A double and a single, and a perfect throw to the plate by that man preserves a one run Atlanta lead heading to the fifth. the top of the fifth Christian Bethencourt set to lead off. He was part of that play from Justin up in the outfield to help maintain this one run lead and 
Chip Joe talked a little bit about Christian Bethencourt, his development back there behind the plate. I talked to Gerald Laird about it. He said he's been so impressed. He said, remember, he's just 23 years old. He's so young to be out there in that position. And the best thing he can do is play. Gerald said, I went to the manager. I said, play him. He's got to get in there and get experience. It's only going to help him moving forward. Well, Gerald's right about that, Jen. And it's very professional of Gerald to do that. Big of him to make it very obvious that Bethencourt was going to play when he came up and not watch. Gerald's a good guy to have as a mentor, too, if you've got any questions, if you're willing to go to somebody and ask for some help, because his stint up here has raised some questions about his defensive ability, which there had never been any before. Especially his blocking of balls in the dirt. And I've said a million times, the work ethic doesn't stop when you get to the big leagues. It's, you've heard me say, Chip, it's tough to get here. It's harder to stay. Sharply hit to second. And Bethencourt is retired to start the fifth inning. So that's another question that the Braves are going to have next year. One. Is Gerald Laird going to be back as that veteran catcher? Number two, is Evan Gaddis going to be here? He has been the starting catcher for the Braves this year until injuries wrecked his September. And number three, has Bethencourt shown enough this September, and will he show enough next spring for him to be on this roster? Don't know. No, it's um. Right now, it's a legal pad full of questions for John Hart. Yeah. One strike for Chris Johnson. Who struck out and ended the Braves second inning. Chris with a late September flurry has a three game hitting streak. Two balls, two strikes. And anything close here, I think, would be hacking. And it's to straightaway center. If you missed the news earlier tonight, Alex Wood will not make his start tomorrow. Some left forearm discomfort or tenderness was the way Alex described it after his last start. And obviously, the Braves are not going to push that situation. They do not think it's serious in any way, shape, or form. And so the Braves will have what is called a bullpen game tomorrow. Ian Thomas, Aaron Northcraft, I believe, are two of the names that were bandied about that could be joining the club, maybe on their way to Philadelphia tonight, and could be in the bullpen for game 162 here tomorrow. Who starts the game at this point? A lot of that depends on how deep Aaron Haran goes tonight. We do know who's pitching for the Phillies, and that's Braves nemesis Cole Hamels. Jay Upton with a homer tonight. It's been a noticeable effort on BJ's part to try to hit the ball the other way in the last four to five weeks, and it has been noticeable and it's been effective, including a home run tonight the other way. No secret his situations on that aforementioned legal pad of John Hart. Is Burnett ready for his 81st pitch? We now 
full count. Aaron Harang is next. And Aaron has gone over the 200 inning pitch mark. Slow roller towards short. And Upton is retired. And so are the Braves. Lower third for the Phillies. 2 1 Atlanta. We're in the fifth inning. here in Philadelphia and I get a chance to come out here hang out just behind one of my favorite guys in the Braves coaching staff Eddie Perez bullpen coach and he is the subject of tonight's Synovus greatness made here Eddie is a guy who is going to get a little more work in the offseason not much of a break for him as he will be managing Aguilas del Zulia in Venezuela it's a club he grew up watching he managed a couple of years ago and I talked to Eddie so they've got a very passionate fan base. They'll let you know if you're not doing well. But he has aspirations to manage here in the major leagues and thinks this will be a great opportunity. I'm going to do everything I can to, to win games out there. And that's the main thing. And, and hopefully that experience uh, helped me to be in the big leagues one day as a manager. And, you know, I learned from the best, Bobby, and even Bob, uh, Freddie, one of the best managers. And, and now i got to put those two together and, and be my own. And hopefully, hopefully we do good out there. Chip Joe, as you guys well know, Eddie is beloved by everybody here. The guys in the bullpen love him. And it's not just because he brings me food that, that I like him also. He just <laughs> delivered some French fries to me while I was standing up there. How's that? That's a good manager for you. That's a great <laughs> manager. Uh -huh. uh, he'll, he'll do well. I, I think he'll make a good major league manager. Line to left by Willie Evans. He serves a, a great spot in a great spot for the Braves in the bullpen talking to the guys out there especially the young pitchers. Um, I think he's a, a good influence will be a good influence on Christian Bethencourt as time goes on from a catching standpoint. But uh, he may at the time when the Braves or somebody else feel like he's ready to take on a managerial role in the big leagues. I think he's going to need to be in the dugout. That's what I was going to ask you. What's what's the next logical progression? Because yeah. he's been a bullpen coach for the Braves, a huge role, as you said. But it's been eight years for him out there. Yeah, I think uh, he needs to be in the dugout for a year as a bench coach type, and from a catching standpoint, as a catcher, that's a, a good place to learn from. Is seeing the whole field, anticipating uh, the lineup, who's coming up next, those types of things. Somewhere. In the near future, I think that's what he needs to do for somebody. So Eddie will be managing in Venezuela for the first time as an American citizen, too. Remember, he got his citizenship papers earlier this summer. A great shot of him doing that in Atlanta. They now call him Gringo. That's, that's exactly right. 
Andres Blanco is the batter. He struck out his first time, but he's made a couple of good plays at shortstop tonight. He's playing Jimmy Rollins. Jimmy's season will end a couple of weeks short of game 162 with a bad hamstring. But he expects to be ready to go opening day. And a swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes. Arizona scored first. They lead the Cardinals 2 nothing in the second. The importance of that game is the Pirates lost to the Reds today. If the Cardinals lose, it'll still be a one-game deficit for the Pirates with one game to play in the NL Central. And if those two teams finish tied, they play Monday in St. Louis. 2-2 pitch for Blanco. Down the left field line, long run for Upton, and he is going to get there. Back to first goes Nieves. And that'll bring up Burnett. That bullpen's a tough place to be in this. League at this level, if you're exposed, you're going to get harassed in an opposing ballpark, but especially in Philadelphia when their fans can stand right above you. It's funny you say that because when this ballpark first opened, if memory serves, it was the Phillies bullpen that was on the top tier because Correct. it's a better view. Correct. And their bullpen wasn't real good. And their fans were not shy about letting them know that they weren't real good. There's some people eating French fries all the time. The pitcher says, "Get us out of here, <laughs> please." And so, a year or two later, they force the visitors to pitch right below the Philly faithful. Well, the flower beds, and along Ashburn Alley, out in straightaway center. We're at a butt, and it's handled by Freddie Freeman. Sacrifice is good. Runner at second, top of the order for Revere. And two out. Uh, one of my favorite lines, and I, I think I tell it every year, but it still cracks me up, is uh, one year the Braves had a situation where they had to call up a guy from the minor leagues to kind of do a spot start. His name was Smith. I can't remember his first name. And he had wire rim glasses, kind of real slightly built guy, about 5'10. And Leo was out there with him while he was warming up, and Leo said if one of the Philadelphia faithful yelled over the railing was Leo you're pitching the paper boy <laughs> oh, really yeah and I said I couldn't help myself I had to laugh these are very passionate fans they're very knowledgeable fans Teams playing well. They're very, very enthusiastic fans. They've drawn well here in Philadelphia since this ballpark opened. This is such a fan friendlier place to watch a game than the Vet, which is no longer on this site. But sadly, the Phillies for many, many years have been a second division club as far as the standings are concerned. They have had trouble winning. Base at center. BJ's coming up. He loads up. Here comes his throw. It's going to skip off the turf. And up the line comes Bethencourt to snag it and tag Nieves. So both Uptons have made throws to the plate to gun down Philly runners tonight. BJ wasn't going to airmail that one to the backstop. He made a good low throw. Phillies have had two runners thrown out of the plate tonight, and Aaron Harang enjoys that. He still leads two to one.
inning here in Philadelphia. Braves defensively had a good night tonight. Both Justin and BJ have thrown out Philly runners at the plate. Nearing the end of the season, always fun to talk about award season. So we asked Joe to come up with his 2014 awards picks. I've shifted gears. I see I've that. gone against my thing in a way. I don't think a pitcher deserves both the Cy Young and the MVP. So here's what I've done. Clayton Kershaw is the most valuable player in the league. I don't think there's any question. But he's not going to get both of my awards. So I'm giving the Cy Young to Adam Wainwright, who's also a 20 game winner. Jacob DeGrom is the rookie of the year, and Matt Williams, the manager of the year, for his work with the. All right, I like Nets. it. I, I love the outside the box thinking. I really okay. do. Because I, any other year, Adam Wainwright would probably be the Cy Young Award winner. Yep. In the National League, 20 wins for the Cardinals. I think it's going to be a fascinating vote myself because how many guys think like you do traditionally that there's already an award for the pitcher. How many people will recognize the year of Adam Wainwright. And lost in all that is. I think Giancarlo Stanton for the Marlins who had he not gotten hurt would I think. Run away with the award in the National League. I think that's what. What caused me to rethink it a little bit. But you know me I'm not giving them both the that picture. Selfish right. Take two awards. Well yeah. It, <laughs> Strike three to rang. If there was such an award where a player could win both it wouldn't be fair that way either. So we're, let's see yours. I mean it Stanton I think is the MVP what he's done to that Marlin for that Marlins franchise hitting in that ballpark. He's legitimized that team. He stayed healthy. Uh, Kershaw over Wainwright just because of his ridiculous numbers. I think we were both very impressed with Dick Rom. Billy Hamilton, yes, a lot of stolen bases, but the Reds are a bad team and he's been thrown out 25% of the time. And I say Matt Williams because in his first year it has not been a cakewalk for him as the manager. I think they've had their lineup together 25 times at the most this year. He's had to deal with the Bryce Harper uh, controversies, running the bases, and all that. As Ashley makes a beautiful play at third, and Howard just scooped first. That was an excellent play. Fossey has been robbed twice for the second out. But I'll also say this, and this is going to sound like I'm being a big homer, and I don't mean it to be, but I don't think anybody in Braves country has given Freddie Gonzalez enough credit for the hand he has been dealt with this team. Let's be honest, as you see, the great play at third, you lose. Two fifths of your starting rotation in spring training. You get Aaron Harang off the scrap heap. You get Irvin Santana, both of whom pitched great. You had a an offensive club that didn't do much of anything this year, and you were in the playoff hunt until September one. You lost your third starter too. That's exactly yeah, right. Floyd got hurt. Exactly right. So, Freddie Gonzalez probably won't get many votes, but I think he should, and he's enjoying tonight's ball game in the sixth inning.
Kobayashi, Chase Huntley, and Ryan Howard are coming up versus Aaron Harang. Let's take a look at tonight's AT&T U-verse trivia question. Last night, Jay up picked up RBI number 100. Who holds the Braves record for most single season RBIs by an outfielder? Oh, good question. Huh. Jeff Burrows. Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron. Mm. David Justice, Ron Gant, Bill Murphy. Lots of choices. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I probably go Murph. MVPs two years yeah. ago, right? Yeah. I don't think it's Roland Office. I don't think it's Deion James. I don't think it's Albert Hall or Brian Asselstein. Or Claudel. No. Wouldn't be Sarge, would it? Popped up. At second base, and she's retired for out number one. We just saw a video presentation asked the Phillies that featured Gary Matthews, so I wonder if Sarge would be a candidate for that. We'll find out in a minute. Here's Utley. He struck out doubled and has been thrown out of the plate. The Rays have nabbed two Phillies at the dish tonight, and that's why Aaron Harang leads two to one. Thirty five doubles for Utley now this year. The Phillies have not hit the Braves five to four. BJ Upton Homer the difference tonight. Well, we were talking about the bug that Aaron Harang had yesterday or the day before. Knock on wood no sign of it tonight. His final start of the season. He's had Utley out on that front foot a couple of times tonight. Struck him out in the first inning on that slow curve and got him to swing and miss there. Which was the same pitch that guy hit 420 feet out of here. In the air to left. Upton retreats. Still going back, and that's over his head and off the fence. Utley on his way to second will pull up there. Back to back doubles for Chase Utley. He's in scoring position with one out. Like Justin just ran out of room. He knew he was about to hit the wall. And just over the top of his glove. So Howard's up. He's two for two tonight. A home run and a fourth inning single. Bouncing ball foul. One ball, one strike. I was thinking today about Ryan Howard. Ideally, he's an American League player. Wouldn't you say at this point? At this point, at yes. this point. So who needs a slugging DH part-time first baseman over in the other league? And maybe more importantly, who can take on the large salary of Ryan Howard? He's ripped from that ball into a shallow right center field. They're not going to throw out Utley this time. He will score standing up, and Howard a 3 for 4 3 night. 95 RBIs for Howard, and we're tied at two. Well, I was talking about this at the beginning of the game that there's some guys in the middle of the order that know pretty much that Aaron Harang's not going to pitch them inside. He doesn't. 
throw hard as hard as he used to where he can really move them off the plate. So they're hanging over the plate. They're ready for anything middle of the plate in that pitch. Another mistake that was up that cost him. So Howard with three of the Phillies seven hits. And he's at first base. With one out in the sixth. That's driven down the right field line slicing. And just foul. So DH spots for Ryan Howard. You always think about the Yankees. Maybe Toronto. The Tigers are going to be without Max Scherzer, it looks like. And I think Victor Martinez is a free agent at the end of the year. The White Sox are seeing Paul Canerco retire at the end of the year. And Seattle's always looking for offense, but I don't know if anybody but the Yankees can afford to pay Ryan Howard. That's another part of the problem for the Phillies. There may not be a match financially, more so than personnel or talent, in the case of Howard. But he's shown tonight he can still hit. Three hits against the Braves and both Phillies RBIs. Covering the outside part, covering the outside part. They, they know that's where he lives. They know he lives down and away. And they're almost daring him to pitch inside. Very economical night so far. Minnesota's beating the Tigers again tonight. Just saw that. They have worn Detroit out this year. The Twins have. And they're making their life miserable right now, leading six to one in the fifth. But Kansas City has fallen behind four-nothing in Chicago after two innings. The Royals are a game back. They'll kick themselves over that. They gave up three in the first. It must be a central division thing. The game separates the top two spots in both the National and American League Centrals. And congratulations to the Royals. In the postseason, for the first time since the mid 80s. If their lineup last night wasn't even born the last time the Royals were playoff bound. Swing and a miss by Bird. And he is out number two. Five strikeouts for Barang tonight, and his first strikeout since the second inning. Browns lined out twice, once to center, once to short. If, I don't know that there's a better example of how Aaron likes to pitch, based on what I was just describing and how the Phillies are going after him. You know how many batters he's hit this year? Well, if it's always away, I'm going to guess zero. One. One. Over 200 innings. He's hit one batter. Two balls, no strikes. And out of play foul. But he pitches. I mean, that's the great thing about Aaron Harang. He makes you swing. That's it. Football and play. Strike to ball ratio tonight. He's going to scatter some hits. He's going to put people on base to get to the guy he thinks he can retire if he needs to. Fly ball to center. Brown got underneath. He had to provide all the power and he skies out to retire the side. Utley's double. Howard single ties the game at two and we're headed to the seven. Freeman Upton and Hayward coming up.
2 2 game after six. Freeman Upton and Hayward coming up for the Braves against A.J. Burnett. He's trying to finish his season in the win column. He leads the majors in losses, earned runs, and walks. Tonight, though, A.J. hasn't walked a soul. He struck out six men, however. Didn't even hit anybody. So much for that key, Mr. Wild Guy. Maybe she didn't use the term wild thing mm -hmm. here in Philadelphia. One one pitch. Uh oh. Thought he got him. I did too. Two balls to strike. How close? Right in between them. Now three and one. Upton's on deck. He's one for two tonight. So is Freddie Freeman. He singled and was thrown out. And they strike him out, throw him out, double play. And now up a base on balls, and Upton's coming up. There's the walk. Going outside, one ball, no strikes. And that's bounced behind Doug Desenzo, the Braves' third base coach. Even count. Hope Terry Pendleton and Alan Butts are doing well again tonight. Neither made the trip to Philadelphia, both out with bad backs. And believe me, both those men are missed. So Scott Fletcher's working at first base for Terry. Ball two strikes. High fly ball hammered deep left. Did he get enough? Brown at the track at the wall. You bet he did. A towering two run homer for Justin Upton. I'd say the Uptons have had themselves a great night. Both have thrown out a runner at the plate, and both have hit homers tonight. Yeah, that was unusual, as I said last night, for nine runs and 20 hits to be. Put together in a game and only have one home run in this ballpark. Tonight there's already been three. Oh, slider that just hung up right there in the inner part of the plate. And that was at a mile high. That gives him a shot at 30. 
29 and 102 for Upton and the Braves are back in front 4 to 2 your score. Third time this year the Upton brothers have homered in the same game. And that's inside for Jason Hayward. Didn't want to forget Billy Nicholson is the man that's. Pinch catching for Alan Butts. Bullpen catcher and first base coach at Gwinnett. The last couple of years, Billy's been in the Braves organization over a decade. He is thrilled to be here. We're happy to have him. We are also spoiled with our quote unquote major league lifestyle. Can't imagine that riding the buses for 10 years, what it's like to get to the show, even for a short period of time, for guys like. Mr. Nicholson, a rocket wheeler. As Hayward walks. Second walk of the inning and the game. And that'll prompt a visit from the Phillies pitching coach and it'll get their bullpen busy. Justin DeFreitas beginning to loosen up. Yeah, I think from Terry Pendleton and Alan Butt's standpoint, they, they both are suffering from bad backs. It may be because they've thrown so many pitches this year in batting practice that their body's just breaking down. I can't imagine how many pitches they've thrown tossed. Or. Put on a tee for somebody like. Greg Walker and Scott Fletcher. The time put in for batting practice is. Unbelievably physical. That's why Eddie needs a massage. From mm -hmm. David Carpenter. I don't know there. how their I don't know how their arms hold up. I really don't. <laughs> So the Braves have the lead in the seventh. Two in, one on, nobody out. Chance for a real big inning. Bethancourt the batter. Christian hit into a double play his first time up and bounced out to second. And way outside. The Royals got a run back in Chicago. They're down 4 1 in the third inning. Minnesota 6 1 over the Tigers in the sixth. Pittsburgh lost. Arizona's beating St. Louis tonight early in the desert. And pitch popped out of play foul. Mentioned last night, Kirk Gibson and Alan Trammell were both relieved of their duties with Arizona by Tony LaRusso after they named Dave Stewart the general manager. But oddly enough, Alan Trammell is still working for the Diamondbacks this weekend. Yeah, I don't get that. He is serving as the acting manager for Arizona, I guess is the title. For the last three games. He's a nice guy, but that's going a little above and beyond, I think. So Arizona will give Allen the old Hale and Hardy handshake and send him on after play tomorrow as that pitch is up and in and almost got Bethancourt. And there's that wildness again from AJ Burnett. By the way, TP just texted me. First, first the pitch to Bethancourt. That was close. He said in capital letters, this body's not breaking down. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, TP. Hope to see you soon. As AJ Burnett works again with a 2 2, and it's hitting here to right. Bird on the run. He's still going. He's on the warning track and gets there. Christian shown he can hit the ball the other way. He's done it a lot since his call up. That drive unrewarded, however. He's 0 for 3.
Chris Johnson looks for his first hit as well. This figures to be the last inning for Burnett. His spot is due third when the Phillies hit in the bottom of the seventh. He's up to 111 pitches. And the inevitable questions will arise for A.J. Burnett. Will this be the last inning he throws as a Philly? As we told you earlier, his contract option is already vested. The only question is, will Burnett accept it and continue to pitch, or will he say enough's enough? And walk away from 12 and three quarter million dollars. Braves bullpen is busy too. Missed for an even count. Aaron Harang's given the Braves six strong innings tonight. Critically important knowing that it'll be a bullpen game tomorrow. Don't know who will start the game. That was dependent upon who pitched tonight. Ball and two strikes. It's Juan Jaime who's up now. Players have a long inning work. Alex Wood. They got him. Check swing and a miss. The throw to second is going to be late. Johnson will be struck out. Jason Hayward steals second. That's his 20th stolen base. Nice milestone for Hayward. And now a new set aside. Boy, they've got the cup on top of Alex's cap. Mm -hmm. Good work. Everybody wanting to check it out like David Hill, but nobody wants to really stare. Check him out. <laughs> look at him. Look at David now. He's eyeing it. <laughs> don't see that much anymore. You don't see the hot foot ever anymore, do you? This time. Good old fashioned big league hot foot given. Talk to Roger McDowell. He could tell you. DJ a homer in two tries tonight. A lot of pitches this inning for Burnett. After giving up two runs and a walk before there was anybody out, you can rack up a ton of pitches. 117, you see there. But he is really laboring now. Ryan Domitz grabbed a bat. He'll pinch hit if Upton can reach. Long inning. Harang is in front. And four pitches puts Upton at first. Three walks for Burnett. 96 now for the year. And it looks like that's going to be about it for A.J. Burnett. 119 pitches. And he'll leave with a couple of runners aboard. So, was that the last pitch A.J. Burnett threw as a Philly? It's the last pitch he throws tonight. And this big crowd in Philadelphia salutes the veteran right hander. He'll give way to Justin DeFreitas. 4 2 Atlanta, top of the seventh. He even saluted C.B. Buckner. That was a good gesture.
of the Atlanta Braves and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Atlanta Braves. 4-2 Braves lead and continue to hit here in the top of the seventh inning. Game 161 of this 2014 season. We told you the Braves made some player moves uh, this evening and they've acquired a new pitcher. Johnny Fullstaff yeah. will be pitching <laughs> in game 162 tomorrow. And here are the two men that we suspect will be brought up from the minor leagues. Saw Ian Thomas earlier in the year working out of the bullpen. Left-hander and Aaron Northcraft who last year threw a no hitter in the minor leagues. And he started the year in double A. Finished with triple A. He saw his numbers in triple A were not that good. Aaron Rang hit for himself. And grounded out off Justin DeFreitas. That might be an easy outing for the Phillies right hander. He's due third here in the seventh. Justin Upton's homer has put the Braves in front again. For tonight's SunTrust shining moment. And the brothers Upton have had a great night tonight. BJ with an opposite field home run, leading off the third. He's also turned in a terrific throw to the plate to gun down a runner. But his brother has also done the same thing. His brother hit a home run. Here in the top of the seventh, a two run shot. And before BJ had thrown out a runner tonight, his brother had thrown out a runner. We got Chase Utley. Nice block at the plate by Bethencourt. The two runs saved at the plate in one inning. Wasn't that a beautiful shot at the plate? I mean, perfectly framed as Utley slid into the shin guards of Bethencourt. Actually, we're not in the same inning, though. Excuse me. It, Justin in the fourth, BJ in the fifth. Yes, it was. So Atlanta leads four to two. And we're in a ring. Going back out there for the bottom of the seventh. Love it. We've said it before, and we'll hopefully say we told you so when this game's over if there were a pitcher on this brave staff who deserved to be at 500 or better it would be this guy on the mound tonight. Rang's trying to chase down his 12th win and he'll have Nieves Blanco and then a Phillies pinch hitter. The bouncing ball foul. The Phillies are going to try to craft a fairy tale inning here in the seventh. They have their snow white combo ahead of the pitcher spot. Bouncing ball to second. Nieves, aka Snow, legs out an infield hit. Now Blanco is coming up. 
Runner aboard with nobody out. I'm sorry. I am too, quite frankly. <laughs> Little tapper up the middle. Nice try by Emilio, but the double clutch got him. So you're telling me Nieves needs snow? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're telling me? Mm -hmm. I see. Oh, okay, I'm putting it together now. I bet you I try by the time this <laughs> inning's over, I'll probably really laugh too. Try to keep up. <laughs> It's game 161, buddy. <laughs> and here's Roger McDonald up for a chat. <laughs> well, that trio chats on the mound. We invite you to sign up for the Braves 2015 Fantasy Camp. Ironically enough, it's at Walt Disney World. Play baseball with some of your favorite Braves alumni. It's an experience you don't want to miss. For the ultimate Braves fans, only 10 spots remain. Go to Braves.com slash Fantasy Camp. For more information. Roger McDowell has done another terrific job with his pitching staff this year. He has had more than his share of challenges with which to deal as the Braves pitching coach. And Cesar Hernandez will grab a bat and hit here. Yeah, there is your Snow White thing. Hang with him. Really sorry. Yeah. So am I. <laughs> 4 2 game, seventh inning. And a strike. Think about a major league pitching coach. You go through your winter, you make your plans, you get your spring training regimen all set up. Look at who you figure your five starters are going to be going into camp. And then with a couple of weeks to go, two guys you were counting on to start get hurt almost back to back, back to back days or outings. And then you've got to scramble. The Rays were able to get Irvin Santana. And they. He was on the market. Was hoping to get a big deal somewhere else. That didn't happen, so he was available. It was apparently very close to signing elsewhere. As the jig is up. <laughs> he knew. He knew exactly <laughs> where it came from. <laughs> Just short. Hernandez. Is doubled up by Simmons. And then don't forget, Ray's bullpen was in a state of flux. You didn't have O'Flaherty, you didn't have Johnny Betters, and a whole lot of youngsters in the first couple of games of the season. Schlosser and Ian Thomas. Mitch Riddell worked those guys in, trying to. Get the ball to Craig Kimbrell as Grady Seismore was going to hit. Still through it all, the Braves have the fourth best ERA in the league. Because guys like Wood and Tehran and Aaron Harang and Irvin Santana have pitched as effectively as they have in starting rotation. Yeah, the way they, the Braves were able to cover up all those injuries and to continue to pitch the way they did all the way through the season. Their, their month of September was still very good, consistent with the rest of the year. Start of play on May 1st, the Braves staff ERA, the entire team ERA was an astounding 2.59. That's ridiculous how, how good that collective work was for starters and bullpenners alike. Remember Aaron Harang started the year three and one with a 0 85 ERA in his first five starts and nobody and I mean nobody saw that coming. He was instrumental in the Braves 
17 and 9 start. Christian's got his fingernails painted so Aaron can see the signs a little better, and they're still having a little trouble. Sizemore walks. And Freddie Gonzalez is going to pop out of the dugout. And he's going to make the call. Harang wanted to finish the seventh, won't be allowed to. No way Freddie Gonzalez wants to contemplate. A big inning against the big right hander here who leads by two runs. 4 2 seventh inning. What a year for Aaron Harang. Salute that man, Braves country. You know the Braves dugout will when he gets there. He departs with two outs and a two run lead in the top of the order coming up. Presented by the Georgia Lottery, Toyota, and AT&T, mobilizing your world. For two, Atlanta. Both Uptons have sprayed homers here tonight. Ryan Howard's hit one, two, and Aaron Harang has a lead in his final start. For the Braves this year. As we promised you earlier tonight, we have the ATT fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag South Fan Photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by ATT. All our good guys back in Atlanta, guys and gals, it's great we've got them on these shots. With the ATT shots. Great work all year long. Well, Chase and Shreve is on to face Ben Revere. He's one for three tonight. Chase and Shreve is getting some work. 23rd, 24th. He was off on the 25th, pitched the 26th. He's now pitching in the 27th. He just marks the fourth day out of the last five. And fouled away by Revere, a ball and a strike. And now hitting 308 for the season. Good for fifth in the league. And a bouncy ball to third. Funny spin. Chris stayed with it. Threw a seed to first. Shreve did his job. He cuts down Revere and ends the Phillies' seventh inning threat. Top of the order coming up for Atlanta. They enjoy a 4 2 lead late in Philly.
to Atlanta. They lead the Phillies, trying to even up the series and win 78 games this year. Changes for the Phillies. Freddie Galvis checks in to play shortstop. And a familiar face greets us from the mound. The third Phillies pitcher of the night is veteran left-hander Antonio Pastardo. Braves have seen a lot of him. So is the rest of the National League. He's been in a lot of ball games. Hard sinker slider, mostly sliders to left-handed hitters. Has provided Brian Sandberg with his left-handed setup role as a left-handed reliever in the setup role for Papelbon most of the year. Not quite the numbers he had last year, but not too bad. Well, a bad season for the Phillies. One positive for them, I think, going into next year has been the development of their bullpen. They have gotten a bunch of hard throwers, strikeout guys for Ryan Sandberg. Looking back to early August, their bullpen has the second best ERA in baseball, and they're averaging over a strikeout an inning. So hard throwing staff. We'll see Bastardo second after DeFreitas. Tonight. Bonifacio's over three, robbed twice. Once by Utley, once by Ashy. He also struck out. That was back in the third inning. No lead safe in this place. Let's get a couple more. Brings up 4 2. Strike one. See that man tomorrow. Cole Hamels. Last time we saw him, things did not go very well. No. And he didn't even pitch a complete game. But he also didn't give up a hit. Neither did Diekman, Giles, or Papelbon. If there was no hit the Braves on September 1st, if ever there was an omen for a month, that might be it. <laughs> That's the truth. Braves are 5 and 18 in September. At the time of that no hitter, the Braves were six out of first and a game and a half off the wild card. No balls, two strikes. And Bonifacio is caught looking for out number one. Hamilton Simmons might recall he fouled a ball away in his first at bat. It took a long time to get back in the batter's box. That left ankle's been problematic for him most of the season, but he's gamely hung in there through seven and a half innings. Here's his fourth at bat. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Well, that strikeout bug has really jumped up and bitten Bonifacio. And he's been in the leadoff spot too, so that makes it show up even more. But that's 11 strikeouts for him in his last 18 at bats. No balls and a strike. I think it's no secret that's. An area of drastic improvement. Players are hoping for next year. John Hart said as much. Got to cut down on strikeouts. Got to have more versatility on offense. Players one and two spots have been revolving doors all year long. Can't fault Jason Hayward. He's been the most productive leadoff hitter the Braves have had. This one's hit a mile high to right. Marlon Bird. But at last count, the Braves have used eight different number two hitters. And they were either last or next to last in average and on base percentage as a collective group. So those two spots hitting in front of Freddie Freeman, Justin Upton, and others will hopefully be addressed during or before spring training next year. 
Gonna have some table setters for the big bats. Freeman, one of them. 77 RBIs for Freddie. Oh, has that one two punch affected him? Well, last year Freeman drove in 109 runs. He's driven in 32 fewer this year. With almost an identical number of hits. And he's hit well with runners in scoring position. You know, a 320 something average. So that means they're just not, there haven't been enough opportunities. And that was the point we made earlier. In the last two months, Freeman's knocked in 18 runs. And he's hit 311 in that stretch. Well, they know Hayward can bat first. The question is, will there be other alternatives presented to the Braves? Fielder straight away and deep for Freeman. See if he's got the hit privilege. You figure he would. Two outs and a 4 2 lead. Didn't mean to. That might have stung the hands. And no shift on 4 and 2 with the left handed pitcher. Playing pretty much straight up. Now full count. St. Louis has tied up Arizona 2 2 in the fourth. If the Cardinals win, they win the Central. Because Pittsburgh lost in Cincinnati today. Full count pitch. And we'll do it again. Mets are losing 1 0 to Houston. Washington beat Miami. If the Braves can win this game, they'll have second place all by themselves. You know what? There's some payoff money. Second place, too. Mm hmm. No, it's not in there with uh, division winners and people who go to the World Series and World Series champions, but there is money for second place. And Freeman is cut down. Second strikeout for Bastardo. And we head to the home eight. Two, three, and four up for the Phillies.
Georgia Power and the Home Depot. It's 4-2 as we head to the Phillies' eighth inning. Aaron Harang started the ball game for the Braves. He went six and two-thirds innings. Chase and Shreve got an out in the seventh inning. And now the Braves turn things over to David Carpenter, who's pitching in his 64th game of the year. Good numbers for David. And he's got the two, three, and four hitters for the Phillies coming up. David spent some time with a bad biceps muscle. And by and large has had a, a solid year 67 strikeouts and 59 innings. And a first pitch pop up by Cody Ashey into straightaway center. One pitch, one out in the eighth. That's a good way to start an inning. And here's Udley. He's doubled his pleasure twice. 36 two base hits for the second baseman. And he scored one of the two Phillies runs. He is, he's had 28 year old Chase Utley legs tonight. Yeah. Well, his fight, fate defensively, might be tied to that of Ryan Howard. If Howard can be moved, maybe Utley can play first base for them next year. There's nothing wrong with his work at second tonight. But to save some wear and tear on those legs. Move the first might help Chase Utley and the Phillies. There was some talk last year at this time about maybe moving Utley to third base. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Foul to the left side. One ball, one strike. Ryan Howard's had a sip of the fountain of youth tonight too. He's got three hits, a homer and two RBIs. And he's next. One ball, one strike. And inside. We're hoping for no drama Saturday night in Philly. Can't afford to put anybody on with. Howard and Bird coming up. Bouncing ball that's off the glove but Simmons backed it up and made the play. Where was he playing? He had to be playing up the way up the middle even on the. Glance off the glove. Oh, yeah, it was. But still, he fielded that on the first base side of the second. Wow. Nice play. So Howard can hit one to Happy Valley, and the Braves would still lead. He did that already tonight. Third inning homer tied the game at one off Aaron Harang. Gonzalez mentioned him last night and earlier tonight. He signed a real big contract with memory serves, and then there were some questions about his medical report, and they changed the parameters of that deal. It's a shorter length and less valuable deal. I think he would like to have a chance to start. Maybe he'll get that chance next year for the Phillies. One ball, one strike. Play foul. Yeah, Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez signed by the Phillies as a free agent last August 30th. He made his big league debut against the Braves September 3rd in Atlanta.
Fly ball toward left. Upton gives ground. Middle of the warning track is there. And Carpenter works a 1 2 3, bottom of the eighth. To the ninth we go. A little insurance would be nice here at Citizens Bank Park. Our AT&T U-verse trivia question. Big night for Justin Upton. Big season for the Braves left fielder. Now 100 and two runs batted in. His 100th RBI came here last night. Who holds the Braves record for most single season RBIs from an outfielder? I'm going with Murph. Bill Murphy. I'm going to go Jeff Burrows. So if Jeff Burrows or Murph is the answer. No, it's Gary Sheffield. Knocked in 132 runs 11 Gosh. years ago. What an offensive juggernaut that team was. Got beat, I think, that year by the Giants in the postseason. Have to look that up. Well, here's Miguel Gonzalez. 28 years old, defected from Cuba in 2013. In late July, there were some press reports that the contract was six years, $60 million. That was never confirmed by the Phillies, though. Then they announced on August 30th a three year, $12 million contract. He came to camp, was not impressive this spring, went to AAA, had some problems with his shoulder, what was termed right shoulder tendonitis. Struck out 54 men in 46 in the third innings. 311 minor league ERA got to the big leagues in Atlanta, and that's what he's done in his first five games. Mid 90s, sometimes even higher than mid 90s with his fastball. Curve and a change. That 03 team lost to Chicago in the division series, three games to two. Kerry Wood beat Mike Hampton in game five. Pretty fateful year for the Cubs, too, huh? It was the year of the Bartman game. And the then Florida Marlins magical run. One ball, two strikes for Upton. Big night for Justin. Two extra base hits, two runs, two RBIs. The seats foul. Oh 
Brent Hange of the Braves just told us that according to Elias since 1900 there's never been a game in Major League history popped up to third and playable for Ashy. There's never been a game in Major League history where brothers who are teammates homered and had an outfield assist in the same game until the Uptons did it tonight. There goes two outs at the plate, the difference in the game tonight. Hartley thrown out in the fourth, and he has thrown out in the fifth. One out for Jason Hayward. Jason's one for two with a walk. And I just missed. Aaron Harang in line for his 12th win. AJ Burnett in line for his 18th win, which would be the first time a Phillies pitcher has lost 18 games since Steve Carlton lost 20 in 1973. In the air toward left center field. That's going to get down in front of Revere. Hayward's got a second hit. That 73 Phillies team was the rookie year of Mike Schmidt. And Steve Carlton at the time was the highest paid pitcher in the game. He made $165,000 that year. Things turned out well for that guy. Well, I think is his 65th birthday today. Mike Schmidt. And Steve Carlton too. He and I were talking about him at the start of the series. I remember watching him as a kid and wondered how in the world does anybody ever get a hit off him? Not too many people did. Especially when he came over here that one year. When the Phillies had the worst record in baseball and he was the Cy Young Award winner. I think they only won 60 games that year and he won 27 of them. Something ridiculous like that. Fans may forget Steve Carlton was originally a Cardinal. They could have had a rotation with Bob Gibson and Steve Carlton. For a long time. And Jerry Royce. It didn't work out. Going to the count. For Christian Bethencourt. He pops another one up. This time to the right side. Utley drifts out. Bird is there as well. And they miscommunicate. Ball drops. And everybody's going to be safe. That was trouble for the moment it left the bat. Utley kept drifting out. Bird was right on his back pocket. And everybody's safe. Chase made it very clear waving that he was there and had it but Marlon never looked down you can see Marvin calling it a Marlon excuse me calling it and Chase never heard him never got out of the way but Marlon you could see when he was coming in he was calling it all the way and then realized he was right on Chase when he dropped it. So that's an error on the right fielder and an opening for Atlanta. For another insurance run. Chris Johnson is 0 for 3 tonight with a couple of strikeouts. He went around, strike one. Hamels will start for the Phillies. Bullpen game for the Braves. Don't know who will get the ball first. Braves Live will come your way at 1 o'clock. Joe and I will get you started with the game at 1:30. first pitch 135 so we hope you'll make your plans to join us for our final broadcast of the year. Forty four multi hit games for Jason Hayward. He stands at second 
Both from court at first. And Johnson's down swinging for the third time. Two outs. And Upton hits. He's one for two with a homer. That's 158 strikeouts for Chris. A lot more than last year for him. We talked about that last night. If the lead is three runs or less, Craig Kimball is going to come on and try to save it in the ninth. He's up in the pen. And a strike. He's got a good arm. If he is healthy at the beginning of next year, then he would be certainly a candidate to take on some innings. Two balls, two strikes. Now the runners will be moving with a full count. Hayward and Bethancourt are running, and the pitch is lined toward left. And Brown's got it, and that will retire the side. Here we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Craig Kimbrell on to try to save the day for Atlanta. They look for their sixth win of the month, and their 78th for the year after this. And we want to thank again our great crew, 
We keep getting such uh, great fan photo shots. We thought we'd give our crew a bonus one tonight. Our fan photo is always brought to you by our friends at AT&T, and there's our great audio and engineering crew. Oh, Rico Maldonado there on the left. Good people. Thanks to all of them for making us sound better. Because if you've ever met Chip in person, you know how tinny and thin his voice really is. That's me. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks to our great crew. Thanks to our friends at AT&T. And thanks to you and Braves Country for sending in the great photos, even the ones that had dogs or hats. We appreciate that. Something's happened here to the PA in Philadelphia. I can't even hear the people in the truck talking to us, and I got headphones on. I think they just thought if they play the music and everything so loud, nobody will notice that they're in last place. <laughs> A save tonight for Craig would give him the top spot in the save category. He's tied right now with Trevor Rosenthal of the Cardinals at 45. 50s Craig's career high that came last year. Second best mark was 46. That was in 2011. So Bird, Brown, and Nieves are doing the ninth. Let me show you our PNC Bank pitch tracks, pitch by pitch here this inning. That's pretty cool technology for that to come up as quickly as it does. And I like it that way because you really can see how a pitcher and catcher are trying to work a major league hitter. And for years and years and years, the simple mantra for really any major league staff, but certainly the Brave staff, the down and away strike. And look at where Kimball's placed the first three pitches to Marlon Bird. Tough, tough pitch, man. When you're behind in the count, you got to deal with that breaking ball of Kimball's, and he's throwing it for strikes, not off the plate so far that you don't offer. Bird just served that in the right field. So the Phillies aren't dead yet. And Dominic Brown's the hitter. Missed his location. It was supposed to be a breaking ball. I wanted to throw it away and get him to chase it. But instead it was in the inner half and he was able to fight it off. Time in 34 games for the Braves. They've hit more than one homer in a game tonight. And Justin Upton's two run shot, the second of those homers, and the difference in the game. Now, though, Kimball's got some trouble. Lead off hit, and the tying run at the plate. Former All Star Dominic Brown. Needs a strike. Dominic Brown 0 for 3 against Kimbrell in his career with three strikeouts. Into the seats, foul 0 and 2. Down and away, down and away. 
Broken bat up the middle. And it's off the foot of Simmons, and all hands are safe. Now, real trouble afoot. Again, mislocation, too, on the part of Kimbrell. Stand down and away. At least they wanted to. That pitch was not. Came in, and he was able to fight it off. Hitters are able to, with their strength, do more damage with that, even if they break their bat than anything down and away. Now, Anderson was getting a little greedy, and that ball actually hit his foot, as you said, Chip, before it got to his glove. He was trying to get the ball and get to the bag and make a 6 3 double play out of it. Instead, he got nothing, and two are on with nobody out. The Avis was scheduled. Let's see if he'll hit it. Appears he won't. Tony Gwynn Jr.'s grabbed the bat. And it looks like he's going to come on and pinch hit. So it's Gwynn versus Kimbrell tying runs aboard now for the Phillies. Down the butt. Kimbrell fought about third, makes the peg to first to sacrifice and a beauty. One for the sacrifice. Galvez bats. The Phillies and their fans trying to do anything they can to keep this game alive, including distracting Craig Kimbrell. Look at the fans behind the plate. That's hilarious. Galvis has never faced him before. Good speed on the bases. Darren Ruff is on deck. He's not pitching around him because he represents the winning run. Fouled straight back. The Phillies gave the Braves an out. Kimbrell would love a strike out of the eighth place hitter right here. When you can deal with Ruff, he's got a lot of power, but also strikes out a lot. Strike away from doing just that. Two balls, two strikes now. A single, an error, and a sacrifice in the Phillies' ninth. Gotta attack this guy. Stay after him with fastballs. The breaking ball got it. Another heater of a breaker. Big strikeout for Kimbrell. Now the Phillies bring on Ruff with two outs and two on. So Ruff hits for Gonzalez. Papelbon ready if needed for the tenth. Roger McDowell. Give Kimball a scouting report on Ruff with Ben Revere on deck. 
Kimbrough's thrown 60 innings on the year last year. He threw 67. He was in 68 games last year. And this is his 62nd this year. Not too many opportunities in the last month. So here's Ruff. And that one got through Bethancourt. And no advance from third base by Marlon Byrd. Big ricochet and a break for the Braves. Ball one. That same pitch to Bethancourt's right that is giving him so much trouble. <laughs> Rough one for two against him in his career. The out was not a strikeout. He put the ball in play. And he's got a hitter's count. Braves have given the Phillies an extra out in the ninth. Ruff will try to capitalize on that. And he was late. He's been down and away to first couple of hitters for the Phillies. He's gone up and away to Ruff in the sequence, as you saw. Well, I'd stay away from that middle end. See what he does here. Three and one. I have to assume it's going to be a fastball, but you never know. Popped up. Will it stay in play for Freeman near the rail, near those friendly Philly fans? And no chance. Best fastball though. 98. Let's end this thing, Craig. Back toward us. Another big crowd here. Over 33,000 tonight. Yeah. Again. Here comes another 3 2. Ripped back toward us. So much for no drama Saturday night, huh? No. That went away after Simmons booted that one. Eighth pitch of the at bat for Ruff. And it's high and they're loaded. Trying to keep the ball up in the strike zone on Ruff. And he walked in. So now you've got to retire the man that has more hits in the league than anybody else with the game on the line and two outs. Revere one for four tonight. 183 hits, 161 singles. A 
A hit, an error, and a walk have loaded the bases for the Phillies in the ninth. And out of play, strike one. This year, opponents with the bases loaded against Craig Kimbrell, two for nine. And in his career, four for 22. No extra base hits. Wouldn't expect one from Revere anyway. A lot of room in right center for Revere. I don't expect him to get around on Kimbrell. Line to short, and Simmons has it. And the Braves have held on to beat the Phillies. Simmons with an error in the ninth inning. Picked up the ball club with a diving catch to his right to end it. And Atlanta hangs on to beat him 4-2 in the middle game of the series. Kimbrell saves it for Aaron Harang, who finishes his year 12 and 12 for the Braves. Well, it's only fitting that Andrelson get the, get a chance to redeem himself, and he does. Diving to his right, Simmons and the Braves have even the series and look to win a series against the Phillies and Cole Hamels here in the series finale tomorrow. Atlanta Braves baseball was presented by Delta Airlines.